So we're now, this is uh, extended material, by the way. So we're now in the extended book. All right. So this is topic 15.1. Um, and we're talking about co conditional probability, which we've already talked about. And you already know stuff to do with it, um, with tree diagrams. It's the re replacement, non-replacement situation. <laughs> But we have this focus on axioms now and being able to actually make statements based on these axioms. Um, the conditional probability axiom is, well, this line here, right, states the probability that B happens given that A has already happened. All right. So um, another way to, well, that's the way to say it. So B given A, so a way it will be said. Yeah? So the probability that B will happen knowing that A has already happened. And that can be calculated by doing that the probability of A and B happening divided by the probability of A. Uh, and you know this from your work on Venn diagrams. Yeah, um, We did a little bit with the Venn diagrams, we've got a circle, we've got a circle. I hope this doesn't, I think we'll just cover it over on that. Um, I won't worry about the circle. So the probability that we're talking about, if I want to know probability of A and B, that's the intersection. But if I want to know the probability of B, given that I know it's A, well, what did that do to my Venn diagram? Yeah. It would make A the universal set, yeah? The probability of B happening, given that I know it's in A, means it's this region still, but out of this, not out of everything. Yeah, so it affected the denominator. So we've already talked about that. Right. Uh, so this kind of follows on from that axiomatic section, and do we need a formal, which I said, if you want to go ahead and read, that's up to you. Uh, but we've got these theorems, so this theorem, the addition one, which is the probability of A or B, so the union, that's the, both circles together, um, is the probability of the two of them together, but subtracting both happening, all right? So we had something which said, if this is equal to zero, what does that mean? two events are mutually exclusive yeah so we had we could use it for that one, okay and then we've got the multiplication rule which is the probability of a and b happening is the probability of a multiplied by the probability of b if they are independent so what does that mean to you if events are independent what does that mean Emma? yeah Bit more on it. What do you mean by non-replacement replacement? Uh, non-replacement. Then uh, the taking one out would affect the next outcome. Yeah, the that's what we're looking for. So independent events are where one pr the probability of well something happening beforehand is not going to affect what happens next. Because what have you assumed? Because By splitting this into that, you've assumed that they're independent. But if they're conditional, they're not independent, right? Yeah. I knew something was wrong. Yeah. Now I get you. This is where you've got to. So conditional probability, we know that this one doesn't apply in quite the same way because this only works for independent. If they're conditional probabilities, then they're not independent. Okay. Um, now we have this third theorem, okay, which is if A and B are independent, then B given A will equal, will be the same probability as B happening if A didn't happen. Makes sense, right? 
which is also the same as B just happening. <laughs> All right. So we'll talk through that in detail and what that means. Uh, but basically, we'll be focusing on these two for this section. All right. So when it says use theorem two and theorem three to show that they are independent or not independent, this is what they're talking about. But there's there's one little step I always mess up on, which is what you were just doing there, actually. So uh, we, we'll take it step by step. I'll go through a few examples. We won't just do one and then let you get on. I know some of you might not be happy with that, but I'll go through a few examples um, because at some point you'll go, but that's really, why, why are we bothering with any of this? Well, it's because we have to communicate that, okay? So this is what we're using, the B given A conditional probability. So you've got that notation, all right? And theorem three, theorem two. All right, so let's have a look. I did print, but it did, well, I tried to print and it didn't print out um, these pages for you to write. But what we've got, just in case you want to add to your notes afterwards, the questions, um, this is the section in the book. So we're on page 302, uh, we're going to look at example one, okay, and then we're going to be doing a few of these questions, including the problem solving question from practice one. So if you want to, uh, you don't need this in front of you now, you don't, no need to open your laptops or anything like that, just if you want to make a note next to it so you don't have to write the question down now for instance you can write the working and leave a space if you feel like you want the question afterwards does that make sense mm -hmm. for your notes 304 is but 302 303 304 so make sure you've written that down so let's have a look at this example let's go step by step the probability that a particular train is late. So do you remember I talked about a question like this, right? The probability that a particular train is late is one from four. How do we know it's one from four, by the way? It's given. How would they know it's one from four? Because every four red train is one of them is late. But how do we know that? Is that just a set? Can I just turn up and oh it's the fourth train today i'm not i'm just not going to turn up for that it's obviously going to be late it's it's the 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 yeah the historical data good so that's where although this is probably not because it wouldn't be as nice a fraction as that but that's how we could get that kind of information if the train is late the probability that Minnie misses her dentist appointment is three fifths which again historical data so this would be historical data over years i imagine um or it's just a bit of an unrealistic question, which is fine. If the train is not late, the probability she makes a dentist appointment is one fifth. Obviously, it's more likely you're going to be late if the train is late. Let A be the probability that the train is late, and let B be the probability that Minnie misses her dentist appointment. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to change to A's and B's. I'm just going to do it in what they give me. I hope that's all right with you, but you feel free to do it A's and B's, but that's what, in the example it has in the book, but that's why I'm changing it a little bit so that we can actually think rather than just copy the solution down here. Okay, so draw a tree diagram for this situation. So a tree diagram will look like, well, what's the first event? Liam? Uh, the train. The train. So the train is either late or it's not late. Okay, I'm going to keep it in the, the format that from the conditional probability. Okay. If the train is late, she is still going to go to the dentist. Okay. So she's at the dentist on time or she's not at the dentist on time, okay? Same if the train was not late. She's at the dentist on time, she's not at the dentist on time, okay? Now, I guess we could put a key to the L's and D's if you wanted to, but we'll just, we'll just work with this. So what was the probability that the train was late? 
What's the probability that it's not late then? Three. Probability that she gets to the dentist on time? If, she, if the train is late. Okay. So if the train is late, she will get to the dentist on time is two fifths. If the train is not late, she gets to the dentist on time is what? Four fifths. Is that what it says? It says one fifth is when Okay, so if the train is not late, so that's this one, all right? She misses her dentist appointment is one fifth. So, so that's one fifth. That's the information given. So that must be four fifths. And the same for the other one. They gave us the three fifths. Mm -hmm. Right, so we filled a tree up. So then it says, have I done this? So let A be the problem that the train is late, B be the problem that she misses her dentist appointment. Okay, I'm actually done this the wrong way around, haven't I? But that's all right. Okay, find the probability. So this would be the A, this would be the B. I have done it the wrong way. But anyway, uh, find the probability that A and B, so that's the probability that the train is late and she misses her dentist appointment, yeah? This is the one we want, the probability of late and she misses her dentist appointment, all right? How do we work that out? No? Yeah? Do you add the fraction? Why do we multiply? Because it's and. Because it's and. If it's already there. Yeah, so and means to multiply. So we've got one quarter multiplied by three fifths, which is three twentieths. Okay? Right. So that's fine. Um, now here's the bit that can get a little bit confusing. Find the probability of B. So that's the probability that she misses her dentist appointment. So what's that? Yeah? Three fifths. Oh wait, no. If that if she misses her dentist appointment is one fifth. Six point five. You didn't give yourself enough time to think that through then, that's the thing. Aiden, what do you think? Um it's both of the B's multiplied together. So hey. the, prob the, the probability of B is... Well, what we actually have to do is we have to figure out... So we want the probability that she misses her dentist appointment, but there are two of those yeah. now. Yeah. So we have to consider both of those roots. All right? And if we've got two roots together, what do we then do with those? Add them. So we've got the probability that we've also got it's not late and she misses her dentist appointment, which is three quarters multiplied by one fifth, which is three twentieths again. But the probability that she misses her dentist appointment in this situation, because there's two things, is. 3 twentieths plus 3 twentieths, which is 6 twentieths. So that's the important thing there. The probability of something happening is not just the number that comes before it. It's, it's all the roots to get there. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Then it says, show that the train being late and Minnie missing her dentist appointment are not independent using theorem two and using theorem three. Okay, so theorem two. So this is where Steph kind of made his first decision and then realized that doesn't work. Well, that's because this here, we now have a value for it, right? Which is just, 3 twentieths, yeah, is this one. So that part is 3 
twentieths. The probability of A happening was, well, that's the probability of it being late, which is a quarter. Now, here is where the confusion becomes, because the probability of, I shouldn't write A, should I? I should have written L. The probability of B, which is not D happening, is the thing I just calculated, which is mm. 6 twentieths. All right? So this is not just this root where we multiply there. Okay, so how does that work then? Well, let's look at this. So does 3 twentieths equal the probability of A, 1 quarter, multiplied by the probability of B happening in, in entirety, which is 6 twentieths. Are those two equal statements? So 3 twentieths and 6 eightieths are not equal. Okay? Therefore, they are not independent. Okay, so that's using... But the focus is this one. This is where the kind of the confusion comes in because it looks like what you've been doing, just the multipl uh, multiplication law, but that's only working if they're independent, right? Okay. Any questions on that? Was it all right? All right. Theorem three is super easy, really. Because we just write, what's the probability of B knowing that A is happening. Well, we just look at our tree diagram. What's the probability of B knowing that A is happening? Well, that's the probability that she doesn't miss knowing that the train is, and that's just three-fifths. Yeah? So there's no calculation needed. And then the probability that she misses the dentist and the train was not late is... So she, one fifth. one fifth, and the probability of B, which was the probability that she misses the dentist, was six twentieths, and we just have to look. It says equals and equals if they are independent. So is three fifths equal to one fifth? Well, no, straight off. I don't need to go any further. But actually also, 6 twentieths is not equal there either, right? So that goes against that one. All right? So theorem th three is really super easy. How do you feel about it, all right? That was uh, the probability of B. So that is probably my confusion. So that should not be B. That should be the probability that she, B was missing missing the dentist or not not missing the dentist, wasn't that? Mm -hmm. was not missing the dentist. Not okay. So remember, the probability of that happening was both of those added together here, not not missing. Not making the dentist. Let's uh, go on. We just use that value. So let's do another one. Maybe it's a bit, be a bit easier if I don't mess around with the numbers. So let's do it. So one coin is flipped. So in this question, all we have to do is draw a tree diagram, to determine whether they're not using both. So we're doing the same thing. So one coin is flipped. Two dice are thrown. Let A be the event. Coins land tail side up. Right, and B be the event throwing two sixes. So, again, I'm just going to say tails and not tails. Okay, that's the flip of the coin. The next one is sixes or not two sixes. Sixes or 
Right. Not two seasons. Right. So we've just got to fill out our tree diagram. So what's the probability of getting tails? Probability of it not being a tail? Go ahead. One out of two. Probability of getting two sixes? One from 36. Yeah. Probability of it not two sixes? 35 from 36. This is still one from 36. So this is where you start, get, well, what's the point in all of this? Because actually we already know, don't we, that tossing a coin and rolling dice is very independent completely. We know it. We don't need to do any of this to know that. It's just about following our formal structure of proof and statements and, you know, that kind of stuff. So how can we write it? You can't just answer a question by because I know it is, all right? You've got to give some reasoning. So that's what this is about. Uh, so theorem two then. So which one's theorem two? Um, so we're gonna do the probability of T and two sixes, tails and two sixes, should be equal to the probability of tails multiplied by the probability of two sixes. All right. The problem one, the way the one to focus on is that one. All right. Because that's where we've got to have more options. So first of all, let's work out the probability of T and two sixes, tails and two sixes. Which root is that? Top one, good. It's this root here. So this is the probability of t and two sixes, which is just one, one half multiplied by, one, which is uh, one sixteen. Yeah. Okay. So we've got one from seventy-two. The probability of a tail happening is just half. So this is the, and we multiply, well, what's the probability of S? Well, if we just chuck that one in, that would be just the same as this, so that's obviously not right. So let's work out the probability. Well, the probability that S happens is that root and that root. So we've got this one sorted, all right? And we need to add it to this one which just happens to be a half times 36, which is one from 72 again. So the probability of S happening is two. Okay. Does that work? So one half multiplied by 2 from 72 is 2 from 144, which is 1 from 72, which is the same as over that. So that is equal to that. So yes, independent. All right. So we've gone from, it's obvious because a dice and a coin are completely separate things and they're not impacted, just to showing it using the the theorem yeah that's the that's theorem two what about theorem three so the probability that i get two sixes given that i did get a tail should be equal to the probability that i get two sixes given that I don't get a tail should be equal to the probability that I get two sixes. All right. This is theorem three. So I'm testing to see whether all of that works. So first off, I think this was this where it caused a bit of confusion. So this one Two sixes given that I know it was a tail. Where do I get that information from? Yeah. So that's just two sixes knowing that 
is just one from 36. Two sixes, knowing that I didn't get a tail. One from 36. What was the probability of getting two sixes? Two from 72, yeah? So let's just write those down. So the probability of that was one from 36. That should be equal to it the other way, which was one from 30. That's good so far. But the probability of S happening was two from 72, which just happens to be one from 36. So that one's also good. So again, I've shown the independence. So once you've got these values, it's very, you know, there's very little to actually calculate. In fact, we could stop at that point and just compare those two. If they're different, there's no point going any further, right? And that's what you see in a tree diagram, isn't it? If you, you go to your tree diagram and you just look, if that number and that number are different, you just you know they're not independent, right? These must have changed those numbers. That's what it's all about. All good? Any questions? The probability that Mickey plays an online room escape game that is Saturday is 60%. So this um, I chose for a particular reason. Uh, would you just like to have a go yourself now? Yeah. Go for it. Mm. Mm -hmm. So the first event being event A is the choice of day. So it's Saturday or not Saturday. If it's Saturday, it's one from seven. If it's not Saturday, it's six from seven, okay? The second event, event B, is whether we play the game or don't play the game. So however you want to do that. So game, not game. So it says the probability that Mickey plays an online room escape game given that it's Saturday is 60%. So game, knowing that it's Saturday, is 60%. But I've put one seventh, so I'm going to change it to six from 10. Okay? So what's the probability of him not playing the game? Four from 10. The probability on any other day of the week, the probability is 50%. So I'm going to write 5 from 10, if you like. It could have been a half, but 50%. 5 from 10. And this is 5. Now, we could already make a statement, can't we? Theorem 3. What's theorem 3? So if G given S is different to G given not S, they're not independent, right? So you can already see that this number and this number are different, therefore not independent. So that's theorem three done. All right? Nice and easy. But let's have a look at theorem two, because it's got a bit more into it. So theorem two states that the probability of S and G should equal the probability of S multiplied by the probability of G, this one being the common mistake area. So we need to do the probability of this, let's calculate, well that's that root, yeah? So it's probability of S and G equals one seventh multiplied by six tenths is six seventieths, right? So the probability of that is 6 seventieths. The probability of S is 1 7. The probability of G, well, that includes this one as well. So I also have to do the probability of not S and G, which is 6 sevenths multiplied by 5 tenths, which is... Three sevenths might be nice and easy. So, yeah, we do. So, 
30 seventieths. So that added together, both of them, is 36 seventieths. So, now, what do we get? Question mark here is, is that equal sign abided to or not? This is theorem two. It's not. So is six seventieths equal to thirty-six over four hundred and ninety? Yeah. 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 And yeah, and the same thing, kind of same principle here. I can divide 36 by 6 to get 6. Mm -hmm. but I definitely don't divide 40, 490 by 6 to get 70. I divide it by 7. Yeah, so, so that is not equal. So they are not independent. So, a bit of maths with that. The other one was quicker and easier, right? Okay. I picked this one. Uh, I think, would, unless anyone's got any particular questions, you're probably okay with that one. All right. So, I want to actually look at this problem solving. Because I thought it was interesting, I never knew why people's blood was B plus, B positive or whatever, and this is what it means. I still don't know what the rhesus status can be. Yeah. I know what the positive and negative and the B and, you know. I think rhesus is valid. So what we've got to decide is are they independent of each other or not? based on that information. And there's a decision we have to make. So let's, first of all, because that's the way we've been going. We don't have to. At some point, eventually, you can stop drawing your three diagrams if you like and just make judgments on things. Uh, but I'm just going to carry on because it helps me the way I like to think. So let's do a tree diagram. Which one do you think should come first? Because we're not told in this case. Because here, look, you've been given the probability, the likelihood, the probability of being B plus. That's having B and being RH positive. Okay, so I'm going to say having B and not having B is the first, and then we're going to say. RH positive, RH negative. Okay. okay. You all okay at the moment with that? Okay, let's put the information in. So it says this is why it's a problem solving one, because it's not just given straight in clear, nice order like we've got. So it says the, pro the likelihood or the probability of someone having B antibodies is 85%. So where does that go? Okay. So that's 0 0.85. So this will be? Okay. The likelihood of being RH positive is 80%. Well, that's the question. Is it 80%? just there or has 80% got to include both roots okay so that's that's the important so this 80% initially if I just read it it could be that that's a 0.8 for 80% but if you remember the other questions the probability of B happening the second thing is actually both options yeah 
So how can we decide if this information is both or just one of them? Yeah. So this root here, so 0 0.85 multiplied by something has to equal 0 0.68. That means the something is 0 0.8. All right? Therefore, I know that's 0 0.8. That then leads me to the conclusion that this statement is just both. Otherwise, they'd have to give you some more information. They've just given you that, that information. So this is a problem-solving one, not of... Can you solve the maths? This is a problem solving one. Do you understand how someone's communicating with you, right? Are you are you all with me at that stage? So it's about interpreting this statement here. Right? Do you all understand why it's about interpreting that? Because that could mean two things, right? So if I go back to the other thing, right up here. What's the probability of G happening? Well, if I said the probability of the game is six tenths, remember the probability of G is six tenths, but it's not, it's 36 seventieths. Why? Yeah, so there's a different probability for both routes. So the probability of G is not just six tenths, it's 36 70. So in this case, this question, we had to determine whether the probability of RH plus was for both routes, that one and that one, where they both had to add up to 0 0.8, or whether just they were both 0 0.8. And we found it by knowing that this branch here was given as 68%. So that meant this times that had to equal 0 0.68, which means that number has to be 0 0.8, which means both of them have. Otherwise, this statement would have to be the likelihood of RH plus given that B, you know, you have to have that extra information. Right. Now, to answer the question, how would you answer it? Are they independent or dependent? Because the probability of RH plus given B is equal to the probability of RH plus given not B. Right? So that's 0 0.8 is equal to 0 0.8. And in the answers to the textbook, that's, that's all it says. It doesn't say how you get to that thought process, but we have to kind of go through that bit first. But it, um, so the, the remaining questions, those ones, you don't have to do any, have to use theorem two and theorem three. It's just pick the one that works for you. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, and if this one, I just don't need to go any further. So they are independent. Okay. Right.